Alright, so I'm going to be doing, elaborating a little bit on Tiger V5. I did this a couple days ago. Um, that's sort of just what it looks like. Uh, don't worry, we'll get detailed. Um, so yeah, um, I used brown, green, black, and then two tans. Alright, uh, this is what it looked like before. Um, you can always reverse to uh, the Tiger V4 video. I have a video of what it looked like better pictures. Um, this is a little picture of the laser mod I did. Um, it just ties right on to where my flashlight is and I have a little monetary button next to it. Right underneath it, next to the uh, handle grip. I can just push that and the laser go on and off. Um, Alright, so this is the tan. Um, I actually have two different color tans. It's kind of hard to see. Um, I don't think I actually had the second tan on this picture. Um, but they're just stripes going from the butt of the rifle down to the uh, barrel, but they're at diagonals. Um, the tan stripes are in line with this stencil, which will be in the next photo. Um, this is what I used for brown. Uh, this is a, this was used in the uh, Tiger V4 video. Well, this is where I got that one from. You can watch that to make this one. Uh, Alright, so this is how I did the brown. I put it at like a 45 degree angle. Um, and uh, the tan stripes were in line with this one, and they were just like sort of, you know, regular spaced intervals. Uh, okay, and this is sort of what it looked like after it was finished with that. Um, this really broke up the image nicely, the gun very nicely. You can sort of see the tan stripe right above where the trigger is, in line with it. There's like a little lighter tan. And um, this is the, this is what I used for green. Um, this is, I believe, was the black stencil, I think, in the Tiger V4. Well, this is where, I also made that one in there. Um, and then, again, this one is, this one is not at 45, this one is more vertical, around, uh, 80, 75 or 80 degrees. Um, this was to represent, uh, the grass, like a grassy environment. Uh, that's sort of what it looked like on the buttstock mess around with it. As you can see, it's not in line with the brown. That's very important. Um, because it'll, like, it'll all just jumble together and you won't get really nice darker than the tan. Um, I had spray painted it up until where the front guard is. Pretty cool. You can see the, uh, sunshade on the scope has almost disappeared. It's pretty cool. Okay. Um, this was it finished after everything. Um, this was with the green and the brown and then the two tans. Um, the whole rifle's done. Uh, so yeah. Alright, then the last thing I used was black. This is the stencil I got from uh, my clock uh, camouflage video. Dug this one up, it's really cool. Um, this one is really good for symbolizing grass and stuff. Here's a little Here's a little picture of sort of what the black looks like just by itself. I also like this one because I, you can turn it any which way and it will uh, still look good. Like it's the same stencil but it's been turned. Um, and so this one I sort of just put on the edges of the gun uh, where the corners were to really, you know, put shadows on it to make it sort of more roundish, not like all boxy. Uh, I have more pictures explaining this because it's kind of difficult. Okay, as you can see, I have it on the mag, the grip, the back of the scope, the uh, front grip, some of the flashlight from on the front of the sunshade, and of course in the back of the stock. Here's the back of the stock I did. Um, I did one on the corner, and then I did not one do on the lower corner because that would just it would, wouldn't just work because of the way the flow would be. Um, here's on. Here's a close-up on the mag and the grip. Um, now the great thing about this black stencil was that you really don't have to like put it in any specific direction um, because of just the way it's breaking up the image. Uh, this is on the back of the scope and try and make it so it will be like rounded, like it'll it'll be always be to pointing towards like the center of the gun, you know. Um, I also did one at the front of the scope. Um, I was just doing that to uh, 
you know, help it break up a little more at the top of the gun because it was looking really bright. Um, now this one being like a grass camouflage, not most of it is like a desert. It could be a desert, but um, I was trying to keep it very kind of dark, but not like very vibrant bright. Um, this is on the front of the gun. Uh, main reasons for painting the front of the gun dark is because, you know, it's pointing out everywhere. It's a long, round object. Not going to look really nature-like, so I just tried to make that look a little bit darker so it would be more of a shadow. Um, I did the top of the lens cap, because that's sticking up, uh, and you know, it kind of looks like a blade of grass, but it would really, it needed some more, it needed to be darker, so I put black on that. Um, and you also need to make sure to get the whole entire top of the gun, too. As you can see, I got the top, and, uh, again, still following the same rule with the brown, um, at a 45, and the green at the 75 to 80. Actually, I'd say around 70. Yeah, 70 or 60. There's the top of the front of the gun of, of the uh, quick detachable silencer. Excuse me. So as you can see, I did the top of it. Um, trying to line up all the little images together. Uh, here's just a picture of it on the old camouflage shirt I had. Thought it looked cool. Really blends in nicely. Um, and there's a little action shot. Now, I am sorry about all these pictures, and then I'm having to record over it all, because I do not have a camera that should be here next week, so stay tuned.